Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope you have enjoyed your long weekend thoroughly. Now it's the time to come back to the studies. So this video is going to help you in your phase one current affairs and you all know GK, ESI and ARD makes up your merit uh, list of NABARD examination and NABARD examination is not far away now. So be serious and stick with me till the end of this video. The students who are watching me for the first time guys, this is to inform you that uh, we have launched the live courses for RBI, SEBI and ABART and this is the timetable which you can see by pausing the video for a second. Apart from this, if you want to know more about us or if you want to get uh, the course and everything uh, in your mobile application, so this is the app uh, from our side, you can download it from the Play Store. Okay, so the very first question is, which IIT has partnered with LV Prasad I Institute for India's first 3D printed cornea. So here IIT Hyderabad guys is the right option and this institution is also located in, in Hyderabad only. Okay. So first of all you need to know that this institution LV Prasad I Institute Hyderabad, IIT Hyderabad and Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. These three institutions have developed this 3D printed cornea of the eye. I hope all of you are aware of what 3D printed printing is because 3D printing is also known as additive manufacturing and for promoting this sector in India, Niti Aayog has already released a national policy on additive manufacturing. However, the policy is not very significant from your exam point of view because that is very much in depth and not required at all from your exams perspective. Therefore, I have not covered it. But general awareness should be there that there is such a policy for promoting the 3D printing sector in India. Now the 3D printing has made its foray into the cornea as well. Now the cornea of the eye can be developed by technology. Now this has been done because the human cornea is not available in, uh, to that extent as it is required in the world. Okay, So demand is more for the cornea and supply is less. Therefore, this gap is fulfilled through this 3D printed cornea and this is not a very new invention. However, it is the first time that this has been developed in India, but in the global stage, it is already there. Okay, this is a new, not a new invention by India, but still uh, for India, it is for the first time that we have developed this technology on our own. Okay, moving ahead, where will VRO develop its first ever steel slag road? So I hope you know what is steel slag. First of all, let me answer you the answer of this question. The answer is Arunachal Pradesh. Now guys, I want to ask two questions from you. Tell me the state animal of Uttar Pradesh, sorry, Arunachal Pradesh and the state bird of this state, okay? Now as far as this steel slag road is concerned, so you need to know slag is basically the remaining byproduct of smelting any kind of ore or metal okay so whenever you smelt a uh, an ore to create another metal so the byproduct of that smelting process is called the slag so the ore that is smelted for producing steel the byproduct of that is called steel slag so basically here what we are doing we are just uh, using the concept of circular economy that is based to wealth. This is an example of waste to wealth because from the waste we have created a road. Okay, so that is. Moving ahead, where is Asia's largest compressed biogas plant located? So guys, it is located in Punjab. So it is Asia's largest. Okay, not only India or South Asia, it is the Asia's largest compressed biogas plant okay so this is definitely going to give an edge to india in its renewable energy uh, commitments and the green energy commitments okay so here sangrur district is the place where this plant is located and 
operationalized apart from this do remember the uh, the gas that will be developed that this plant will be supplied to the indian oil corporation limited and this plant has an operational capacity of 33.23 tons compressed biogas now why the capacity is important because this is asia's largest compressed biogas plant so do remember the capacity the next question is uh, ministry of health and family welfare has launched palan 1000 journey of the first 1000 days campaign to encourage the cognitive developments of children in the first 2 years of its life uh, what is the child mortality rate in india according to the ministry of health in 2019 so basically what has happened that when this campaign was launched by the ministry of health the ministry informed of the child mortality in india and how significantly the ministry and the government of india has worked to reduce the child mortality was also highlighted by the ministry when it was launched okay so that is the basic uh, news and because of that the question is here so what is the child mortality it is guys 35 per 1000 life births now here i would like to ask a question from all of you tell me the maternal mortality rate of india according to the latest data of the census commissioner of india registrar general and census commission of india okay so guys i hope you are aware that the cognitive skills of a child start from the womb itself okay uh, generally we see the growth in a child uh, from the very birth of the child from zero day to the end of the life of a person but the cognitive development the journey of cognitive development is called as the journey from womb to tomb because it starts from the womb and it ends at the tomb okay so in order to develop the cognitive capabilities and ensure that every child gets the opportunity to develop the cognitive uh, abilities to the full extent this campaign has been launched and what are the factors affecting the cognitive development of a child during the first two years firstly the health and nutrition level of the mother and secondly the uh, nutrition that the child gets after getting birth in its infancy stage uh, apart from this the cognitive development is also uh, characterized by the environment of the child but that is not uh, considered here what is considered here is the nutrition level of the mother uh, during pregnancy and the child's nutrition level so the ministry is going to create awareness among the parents uh, so that they take care of the nutrition and health of the mother and the infant okay that is the basic idea of this palan 1000 uh, journey of the first 1000 days campaign okay moving ahead what is the name of the nseit's new platform that has been launched for facilitating industry and scientific collaboration for sdg so here manthan guys is the right answer so another manthan uh, platform has been launched and this platform is owned or administered by the national stock exchange of india so basically this is going to handle the functioning of this manthan platform now what is the purpose the purpose is to uh, basically provide a common platform so that the industry and the scientific academic community can get together and develop solutions so that we can uh, we can implement the sustainable development goals in a better position in a better manner okay so they, this is the basic idea so it is nothing but an online platform that would bring the industry and your scientific community together many such platforms are launched on, on a daily basis by the government or the government aided agencies moving ahead the next question is how much amount has been earmarked for distributing among states uts under the ayushman bharat digital mission a very very important question now do listen to me carefully so here option b 100 crore is the right answer now what has happened the national health authority has announced that from now onwards the states and union territories will get the funding under the ayushman bharat digital health mission only when they perform in a better manner okay so it would be the performance based incentives 
that the states and UTs would get. For example, if Punjab is performing really well in implementing the Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission in comparison to Uttar Pradesh or vice versa, you can say Uttar Pradesh is performing well and Punjab is not performing well, whatever it is, but the state which is performing well will get the higher share of uh, the uh, budget and the state which is not performing well it would get a lesser share. So that is the basic decision that has been taken by the National Health Authority. So here uh, the implementation of Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission would be considered. Tell me this mission is created by which committee? This is your next question. Okay, so the, uh, the allocation will be made on the basis of the performance which will be recorded in the health facility registry and healthcare professionals he, professionals registry. So I hope you are aware that these two are the components of the Ayushman Bharat digital mission. Okay, this would be the database where all the details of the uh, uh, of the patients would be recorded, and every uh, healthcare facility will also be re registered here. And this would be the professionals registry where the doctors and medical health professionals would be registered. So the performance recorded in these two registries will be measured and on the basis of that allocation will be made to the states and unit territories. The budget for the entire mission is 500 crores for five years and the amount that will be allocated to states would be 100 crores and this would be the incentive based funds. Okay. Now the parameters are 100 crores for each verified entries in your health facility registry and your professional registries, okay? <coughs> Rupees 50 crores will be given for each verified entries in the uh, health facility registry and health professional registry between 1st January 2023 to 31st March 23. No funds will be allocated for entries verified in these two facilities after 31st March 2023 states and union territories are at liberty to use these funds to deploy uh, human resources full-time or part-time under the ABDM. Okay, so these are the very basic guidelines that have been given and if you have noticed carefully, it is just the date that are uh, which are changing. Okay, if the registry is done till this year's end, then 100 crores will be given. If the registry, uh, uh, verified registry is done, from 1st January to March 2023, then the 50 crore rupees would be given. And if the registry is done after 31st March, then no funds would be given. So that is the basic idea. Moving ahead, where is Agasthi uh, Yamalai Elephant Reserve located? So guys, it is Tamil Nadu's fifth elephant reserve. Union Environment Ministry has approved this as the fifth elephant reserve of Tamil Nadu and after this addition now India has 32 elephant reserves. Now this announcement was made on World Elephant Day. When do we celebrate that day? Tell me. Okay, now guys, this is the map that I have given you for all the elephant reserves but do re remember this thing that 31 elephant reserves are positioned in this map. Only this Lemuru elephant tiger elephant reserve in Chhattisgarh is missing from the picture. Apart from this, you can see the latest entry is also there. Agasthi Malai elephant reserve is also there in this picture. Okay, so you can use this to memorize the location of the elephant reserves. Okay, you can clearly see it is majorly either in the north, uh, in the south states or in the northeast states. Also in the east, you can say. But north may or west may rather elephant reserves nahi hai. Okay. The next question is, which state has launched the Vatsalya scheme for increasing the fertility rate of women by providing them financial assistance of rupees 3 lakhs to undergo the in vitro fertilization treatment? So here guys, it is Sikkim. So Sikkim has announced this scheme, Vatsalya scheme to provide 3 lakhs for uh, uh, for the uh, for encouraging the women to undergo the IVF treatment, the people who are not able to conceive naturally, okay, so they that, those couples will get this amount. 
apart from this mobile village clinics scheme has also been launched so obviously from the very name itself mobile village clinic that means it is going to provide the health services at the doorsteps of the villagers next scheme is amma sashaktikaran yojana so this scheme is going to provide rupees 20000 annually to the unemployed mothers so that they can uh, provide or use this amount for the uh, nutrition of their for providing the nutrition to their children and family and for themselves as well mukhya mantri swasthya suvidha yojana was launched to provide a health insurance uh, for the medical ad hoc contra uh, contractual probationary employees another scheme is also there that is mobile village clinics only so it is a repetition here so there are basically four schemes that have been launched by sikkim so do remember and this much is enough from exam point of view next question is which state has launched the mukhya mantri anuprati coaching yojana to provide free coaching to students for competitive exam so here rajasthan is the right answer now what is the basic idea of this scheme to provide the competition exam training or coaching like upsc ibps etc etc the uh, kind of exams are not provided here but it's generally the competitive examinations for which the free coaching will be provided to the students who belong to either sc st or your poor family backgrounds or tribal uh, tribal communities those people uh, will get the free coachings under this scheme and for that the budget has been 17 crores last year the budget was around rupees 3.5 crores now it has been increased significantly to over 17 crores so a lot is being spent by this government on this uh, scheme now guys tell me there is a similar scheme that is run by the uttar pradesh government and also the delhi government can you guys name those two schemes i have covered those two schemes now it is your responsibility to tell me the same idea is there behind those two schemes provide the competitive exam coaching to the scst students for free okay so do tell me apart from this the income criteria for the students who will be eligible under this scheme would be 8 lakhs or less okay next question is which bank has launched the utsa deposit fixed deposit scheme at 6.1% interest with a tenor of 1000 days so here uh, state bank of india is the right answer now guys on the independence day there are banks which have launched special schemes so state bank of india has launched the utsav deposit scheme so it is basically a fixed deposit scheme at which you will get 6.1% interest rate for a tenor of 1000 days so if you have an account in sbi then this is the opportunity for you guys to secure a good interest rate on your savings bank of baroda has also launched an fd scheme only bank of baroda tiranga deposit scheme at an interest rate of 6% for a tenure of of uh, 444 or 555 days so there are two tenures offered by bank of baroda okay bank of baroda is going to provide this interest rate for fd that is below rupees 2 crores okay then we have karnataka bank it has launched kbl amrit samriddhi scheme uh, for a tenure of 75 weeks at an interest rate of 6.1 okay so here guys this video ends i hope that you have liked this video and if you have really liked this video then do mention the answer of the questions that i have asked you in the comment section below and even if you don't mention please search those answers okay because those questions are important and help you in developing and holis developing a holistic view of the news thank you so much guys for watching this video have a good day